Welcome back to another exciting coding project, where we'll once again take a creative idea and turn it into something fully functional and visually appealing. In this tutorial, we're going to build a background image scroll effect that adds a dynamic sense of motion to your web page. When you look at the finished version of this project, you'll notice that our main website layout is very clean, minimal, and easy to follow. It includes a stunning background image, a bold title at the top, and a few sample paragraphs of text that give the page a complete and realistic look. As we scroll up or down through the content, you'll see the background image smoothly zoom in and out while its opacity gradually changes, creating a modern and elegant scrolling effect. We achieve this effect by tracking the scroll position of the page using JavaScript and then dynamically adjusting both the zoom scale and the transparency levels of the background image in real time. In the next section, we'll begin by writing the HTML structure that forms the base of our project. Then we'll move on to styling it beautifully with CSS. And finally, we'll add the interactive behavior at the end using JavaScript. Let's begin building our project together. First, let's open Visual Studio Code and close the Get Started tab. Let's go to the File menu and select Open Folder. As always, I prefer creating the project on my desktop, but feel free to choose any location on your computer. Let's click on the desktop and then press the New Folder button to create our new folder. Let's name the folder Background Image Scroll Effect to match our project name. After pressing Enter to confirm the name, click the Select Folder button to choose our new project folder. Let's close the Get Started tab once more, then right-click in the Explorer section on the left and select New File. Let's name this new file index.html and press Enter to confirm. With our index.html file open on the right side, completely empty, we type an exclamation point and press Tab to generate the HTML5 boilerplate. Let's type an exclamation point and select the first auto-suggestion that appears. We now have the HTML5 boilerplate ready. The first line is the doc type declaration which tells the browser the version of HTML used on this page. Since we're using HTML5 for this project, we simply write HTML in that spot. Next comes the HTML tag, serving as the root element in our HTML5 document, which contains the head and body sections. Inside the opening HTML tag, the lang attribute tells the browser the main language for our page, which we set to English here. Since we're using English for our page, we simply place en right there. The head section contains the metadata tags along with the title tag. Inside the first meta tag, the charset attribute sets the character encoding for our HTML to UTF-8. HTML5 recommends UTF-8 because it supports almost every character and symbol users might see in our project. Next comes the compatibility meta tag, which instructs Internet Explorer to use its latest rendering engine, Edge. The viewport meta tag guides the browser in resizing the page for various devices. Let's press Alt and Z together to enable word wrap and see the full code. The content attribute in this viewport meta tag matches the page width to the device's screen and sets the initial zoom level to 100%. Next, we reach the title tag, which defines the page's title shown in the browser. To view a browser preview right inside Visual Studio Code, we can use the Live Preview extension. Let's right-click inside the editor and select the Show Preview option. The browser preview appears on the right side, showing an empty page with the default title, Document. Let's collapse the Explorer panel by dragging the divider line to the left. By doing this, we've created more space on the right side. Let's update the title to our project's name, Background Image Scroll Effect. Notice how the Browser tab now shows our project title clearly. And inside the Body section, we add a div with a class named Background Image. Let's type BG Image inside the body to create a div with the Background Image class and ID. This is currently an empty div that we'll style later using CSS to add a background image. For the moment, we'll keep the setup just like this. 
Next comes the main container where we place the website's text and title. To target the container class, let's simply type .container. Inside this container, we include an h1 tag for the heading. Let's simply greet visitors with welcome to our website. Following the h1 tag, we will add a paragraph containing some simple placeholder text. Let's copy this paragraph a couple of times to add more sample text. As we scroll through the page, you'll notice the smooth scroll effect taking place. We're creating a simple website here that everyone can use easily. This step isn't crucial for our project right now. The key element here is the background image, where we'll apply zoom and opacity effects using JavaScript. In the next part, we'll begin styling our project by adding a background image with CSS. I'm excited to continue with you in the next section for CSS styling. In the previous section, we completed the HTML structure for our project. In this section, we'll begin styling our project using CSS. To begin styling, let's create a new CSS file. Let's open the Explorer panel by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus E, then right-click inside it on the left side and select New File. Let's name this new file style .css and then press Enter to create it. Before applying CSS to our project, we need to link the style sheet inside the HTML file. Let's switch back to the index.html file and add a link tag right after the title tag. Let's type link and select the third autocomplete suggestion for CSS. This link tag establishes the connection between our HTML file and the external style sheet. This href attribute points to the location of the CSS file, so since both files are in the same folder, we simply use style.css as the value. With the CSS file linked, we can start styling our project elements. Let's save this file by pressing Ctrl and S together. Let's close the Explorer panel by dragging the divider line to the left, creating more space on the right side. Let's switch to the style.css file and start styling the body element. To style the body element, we type body and then open curly braces. Let's start by removing the default margin around the body element, which clears away the extra space, simply by setting it to zero. To improve the text's appearance, we change the font family to sans serif. We've now wrapped up the styling for the body element. Moving forward, we'll style the background image and the empty div. To add a background image to our element, we'll target it using the .bg image class. Let's begin by setting the height and width. We just set the width to 100% and the height to 100% of the viewport, so it fills the entire screen. You'll notice the div positioned at the top. Right now, it's completely empty, so let's add a background image to it. To add a background image, let's use the free photo site Unsplash. Let's open Google Chrome to search for the website. Let's search for Unsplash right in our new search bar. Looking at the search results, the first option is unsplash.com. Inside the search bar, let's enter a term like nature. Here, we can select one of these images. I've selected this serene ocean image for our background. Next, right-click on the image and select Copy Image Address. Let's switch back to Visual Studio Code and add the background property right here. Next, we use the URL function to include the external image. Let's add double quotes here and paste the link inside them. You can now see the image positioned clearly on the right side. However, we actually want this image to stay fixed at the top, even as we scroll down the page. First, let's set the background position to center. You'll notice the image centers perfectly, so we adjust the background. Let's set the background attachment to fixed, which is for having a constant position. Notice how the background now stays fixed in place, even as you scroll down the page. When scrolling down, all we need to do is zoom out the image and adjust its opacity.
Before moving to JavaScript, let's style this h1 heading and these paragraphs to complete our layout. So, right here, the div that holds this element has the class container. Next, we'll target that element and increase its padding to 100 pixels, which pushes everything inside more evenly. Let's check this out in the browser to see it working. This setup works well for our current screen size, but let's add a media query to handle smaller devices. Next, we create a media query that triggers when the screen width reaches 500 pixels or less. When the screen is narrower than 500 pixels, let's reduce the dot container's padding to just 10 pixels. When the search bar expands, it looks much smoother and the image scales nicely just like this. Let's adjust the size of this heading for better visual appeal. So, we target each element and set its font size to 50 pixels. Take a look in the browser, and you'll notice the image has repeating effects at the top. Let's easily fix this by setting the background size to 160%, for instance. If you look at the browser, you'll see it's in zoom mode, and scrolling down zooms out the image. Later, we'll create a smooth zooming effect using JavaScript for better interaction. Let's simply update the paragraph's color to enhance its appearance. We set the color to gray for a subtle look. That wraps up the CSS styling for our project. Now, in the next part, let's add JavaScript to bring our project to life. Let's add a zooming and opacity effect that triggers as you scroll down the page. Let's move to the next section to explore the JavaScript part of our project. In the previous section, we completed the CSS styling for our project. We've added a background image and styled the main area of our website. In this part, we'll use JavaScript to bring interactivity to our project. First, let's create a JavaScript file by opening the Explorer panel with Control plus Shift plus E. In the Explorer panel on the left, right-click inside it and select New File to create our JavaScript file. Let's name this new file index.js. Before we dive into JavaScript, let's link the file to our HTML inside the body tag. Let's switch back to the index.html file and add a script tag right at the end of the body section. Let's type sc and select the second suggestion, the one with the src attribute. Since both files are in the same folder, simply enter index.js for the source attribute. With the script file linked, we can begin adding JavaScript to our project. First, let's save the file by pressing Ctrl plus S. Let's close the Explorer panel by dragging the divider line to the left, then switch to index.js to begin writing our JavaScript code. First, let's add this background image that you see right here. It features both a class and an ID named background image. You can use the getElementById method to select and return an element based on its unique ID attribute. Let's open our JavaScript file and create a constant named background image element assigning it the element from document.getElementById using the ID background image. Let's press Alt plus Z to enable word wrap, so we can view all our code clearly, and then add an event listener to the window to track the scroll position as we scroll. Let's add an event listener to the window for the scroll event, so that when scrolling occurs, it triggers a function to update the image's size and opacity. So, let's create a function called updateImage and then call it right here. So, we simply name this function updateImage. In this image object, we target the background image element and adjust its opacity by accessing the style property. Let's set the initial opacity to 1 when the page is at the top, and then gradually decrease it as the user scrolls down. We can easily calculate the scroll position using the window.page, y offset property. 
Next, we divide this number by a large value like 800 to make it smaller than 1, then subtract it from 1. As you scroll down, notice how the number's opacity changes, so we'll use console log to output two values, the Windows offset and 1 minus that offset divided by 800. Let's open the console by clicking the hamburger icon to access the DevTools pane, then switch to the console section. Now scroll down the page and watch how the Windows Y offset starts around 2.79 while the opacity begins at 0.99. As you continue scrolling, the opacity decreases gradually until it reaches zero at the bottom. At that point, the Y offset shows 837, which could turn negative. To prevent that, we can adjust the value to 900 instead. Keep in mind, this number might change based on your zoom level and screen size, but it won't impact the final effect. With the opacity now in place, let's carefully adjust the background size, starting from a large 160%. Target the background image elements style.backgroundSize property, then gradually decrease it from 160% using the window.page Y offset value. Remember to always add a percent sign at the end since it is defined as a percentage value. As you scroll down the page, the background shrinks noticeably, but that number still feels too large, so divide it by 12 for a smoother and more balanced zoom level. Let's go ahead and test this scrolling effect in the Google Chrome browser. Notice how the zoom level reduces smoothly while scrolling down, and how the top area gains more opacity along with shifting zoom details. This wraps up our project very nicely and successfully. I truly hope you found it enjoyable and picked up some valuable and practical skills along the way. We styled the background image with CSS to fix it at the top, and also used JavaScript to dynamically alter both the opacity and size while scrolling. See you again in the next exciting project.